So let's fly over the Majuba Tivet College campuses located in northern KwaZulu-Natal. And I've chosen this angle of entry uh, because I want to show you how you have Joburg and the Witwatersrand down at the bottom over there. And then you have Durban stretching way out in the distance. And with the discovery of gold and the huge industrialization going on in the Witwatersrand, it became really key to develop railway lines and other forms of transport down to Durban. And Newcastle forms a central part of that story. Now, the big issue was that between Durban and Joburg lay this huge Drakensberg escarpment and there was real difficulty in getting a railway line and roads down through that. But by around 1890, the railway line had been built and exactly around Charleston where we're stopping off, there was a railway station and a customs post that subsequently become a ghost town when in the 1960s the black people who bought freehold land there were basically uh, forcibly relocated to Madadeni. And you can see a split on the one side you've got the Buffalo River charging down the huge escarpment and on the other side you've got the road and the railway line to your right slowly trying to work its way and snaking downwards. Now the Buffalo River was of huge importance importance to the Zulu. In fact, Shaka had sent his impis up here and he was up here himself in the 1820s. And basically what happened was they destroyed the Amazizi and the Amakhlubi, the people who were living over here. And they named the highest hill in this area Majuba, uh, place of the doves, hill of the doves, ironically to some extent symbolizing peace. Although I don't think Ama Azizi and Ama Khlubi would have agreed with that uh, designation. And nor would the British actually, because in the First Anglo-Boer War, they lost a decisive battle over there, with the Boers successfully storming the British occupied hill. Now, Majuba Tivet is one of the largest and most successful Tivet colleges in South Africa. And that's partly got to do with some of the heavy industries in the area, specifically steel. So you've got ArcelorMittal, the Newcastle Works, providing an environment where there's a demand and a need for technical and vocational skills. So let's take a look at what the uh, Majuba Tivet College campuses actually look like. Starting with the Newcastle Technology Centre, known as a New Tech. Now, there you can do all sorts of engineering programs, and they've recently built a whole bunch of new uh, NCV workshops and drawing rooms to cope with increased demand for the NCV program. And right next door, you have the Newcastle Training Centre, which does civil engineering, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. And basically, business employers can send their employees to qualify over there, uh, especially because now it's become a centre of excellence for boiler making. So you've got the whole apprenticeship system working over there and a trade test center. So basically what you're doing is you're not just checking that they've got the academic knowledge for a qualification. You're actually giving them tests to check that they've got the skills to do the job and then vetting them for that and sending them out into industry with some guaranteed skill level. Now just a little bit further uh, down the road, you get the IT and business campus known as the ITB. Now that's an integrated business studies campus. So you can do NCV courses in hospitality and office administration and tourism. And then you can do business management and financial management and become a management assistant as well. They've also got a fully fitted industrial kitchen. Uh, which is used to train the hospitality students and a conference and meeting venue to encourage people to come so they can practice their hospitality skills. Now, if you keep going uh, over the business center of Newcastle, you'll come to the central office. 
Now, I've actually been there, and it's a stunning piece of contemporary architecture. And it actually only costs 23 million, which I'm quite impressed about, given how much money I've seen other TVET colleges spend and not get quite as much as this. And just to say that Majuba TVET College has an established and well-working work-integrated learning unit. And what they do is they basically collaborate with business and industry to identify opportunities, to expose their students to the world of work, to place them in work-integrated learning, and to increase the number of learners or students actually getting into the market. So it's really excellent. They got all sorts of programs for the N6 students who need 18 to 24 months of experiential practical learning. Same thing with the NCV level 4 students who need 12 months. And then there's also this workplace-based exposure, they call it WBE, where they collaborate with the Swiss South African Cooperation Initiative and they place their students in business or industry during their recess periods or during their holidays. And if we lift out of the historically white uh, Newcastle and cast our eyes across to Madadeni and Ozizweni, what you'll see is in between them, you've got an industrial zone. Uh, this one is called the Riverside Industrial Area. And there you'll find all sorts of industries that revolve around coal and revolve around steel. So you've got South African calcium carbide, which makes a chemical needed for the production of steel. You've got all sorts of rubber making plants and that kind of stuff, some of which are struggling at the moment. But you'll also notice that there are cement factories because uh, there's lots of lime in the area, making it ideal for cement and steel. And then finally, you'll notice that there's some clothing factories along with China City, indicating that there's a strong history for textile manufacturing over here, combined with the Chinese influence, where uh, Taiwanese and Chinese businessmen were invited in the 1980s to come across to Newcastle, take advantage of cheap labor, and start the process of making uh, clothes. And it quickly became a boom industry in Newcastle, very controversial because of the amount of money paid to the workers and the working conditions. But certainly it led to a boom time until we had the increasing unionization and insistence on better work conditions. And it's a huge problem to think about in South Africa, whether we don't need to make sure that we keep low paid, high labor kinds of jobs, which do provide some competitiveness to South Africa in comparison to international industries, rather than protecting work and ending up with a small elite of people who've got jobs and then a massive underclass who's struggling to get any work whatsoever. Now, just across from the Riverside Industrial Area is Madadeni. Now, this was built in the 1960s as quite a high-end township, if I could put it that way, a kind of like a petty bourgeois middle-class township for nurses and teachers and businessmen and entrepreneurs who are looking for a decent house with decent uh, electricity and plumbing. It was considered as a showcase township by the apartheid planners. Now there we have the Center for People Development. Now it's another fully integrated business studies campus and it's been recently upgraded quite strongly. So it's got really nice lecture rooms. It's also got a fully fitted industrial kitchen for the hospitality learners. It's also got a fully functional office practicum room where the office administration students can practice their actual uh, office administration skills. Now, if we pull out of the better built and smaller Madadini, you'll see that extending way off to the one side is Ozizweni. Now, that was a more sub-economic township. And as the attempt to get rid of black people in all the freehold sites uh, in those black spots across KZN intensified, so they were forced into these uh, townships. Terrible accounts of being shifted from a place where they had a nice uh, place to live with cattle 
and with crops and suddenly dumped in a icy cold middle of winter tin shack uh, with no place to grow anything. So with that terrible backdrop it gives me some pleasure to say that the Majuba Technology Center is a genuinely good campus. Uh, it boasts high-tech workshops, it's got modern equipment, uh, you can do civil engineering and chemical engineering and electrical engineering. You have a fully fitted plumbing workshop, a fully fitted carpentry workshop, as well as a bricklaying workshop. But interestingly enough, it's also got a primary agriculture uh, program and it's got a two hectare farm where the students can actually go and practice basic vegetable growing and that kind of stuff. And specifically, they can do hydroponics and they're learning how to grow lots of healthy vegetables in small areas. Now, you'll have noticed that the zone between Madadeni and Ozizweni has got like a kind of like an agricultural feel. And that's because there were freehold black farmers there as well in that blowbosh area between the two. And we can fly over these historically black freehold areas towards the occupational programs unit. And over there you can do things like garment making and furniture making. You can do some retail skills and some insurance skills. You can also learn kind of things like hand sewing and how to work with hides and skins. So very practical hands-on space. So let's lift off out of Newcastle and fly down towards Dundee to the last campus. And just to note that this whole area as we move through has got big coal reserves, most of which have been mined out, although we still have some functioning coal mines currently, and even a big, huge new coal mine being developed around Danhauser by the Australians, actually hundreds of millions being poured in for this, which is strange in some ways because it's an extractive industry. So quite a lot of the locals don't benefit from it. In fact, a lot of them have been kicked off the land. And on top of that, uh, it's a fossil fuel, which is directly going against the current imperative to stop global warming cut uh, fossil fuels and try to start with greener energies. But really, a lot of this area centers around coal and steel. And you have a very particular type of coal here. You have coking coal, which you can actually use to make steel. So it was ideal. On top of that, there's lime over here, which you also need for steel and for cement. That's why you have all these steel factories being set up here. And that's why you had such a boom here for a while. Now we're flying into Dundee, the place where Mahatma Gandhi was actually tried and jailed. He spent some jail time in Dundee. And we're going towards the Dundee Technology Centre, which has been recently set up over here. And it's a multi-purpose campus. So you can do civil engineering and electrical engineering and mechanical engineering on the one side. And then on the other side, you can do financial management and human resources management. And you can be a management assistant and you can do a farming management qualification over here in four to six level. And that gives us first sight of the Majuba Tivet College campuses caught in this coal mining, steel manufacturing area, which had all sorts of black uh, freehold farming going on, and then terrible apartheid stories, the growth of all sorts of secondary industries as well, the explosion of clothing manufacturing with that uh, alliance on the one side between Zulu women and Chinese factories owners, and finally, as we're going up Lang's Neck Pass, the struggle between the Boers and the British on the one side, and the Zulus coming into this area, and then finally the huge engineering feat to get a railway line up the Drakensberg escarpment so that transport and goods could move between Joburg, Witwatersrand, and the huge mining and industrialization going on there, all the way down to Durban. And in between those two, we have Majuba.